Hello viewer, friend, partner. Welcome to this episode of The Glory. Today I want you to pay careful attention to the preaching of the word because the Bible says in Deuteronomy 28 that if you hearken, listen diligently, carefully to observe, to do everything that you hear from the word of God, then the Lord will set you on high above all nations and you will truly be blessed and all nations will see that you're blessed. So as we go into the message, open up your heart, pay careful attention and listen to the word of God and receive that word. God bless you. I realize that Jesus was saying this about the world, but sometimes as believers, we have a bit of the world in us because of our choices and our decisions. So the Holy Ghost is there to convict us. Because if you and I keep exercising our senses in that of the world, we are just like the world. When you take the worldly person's diary, Monday to Sunday, and you take the believer's diary Monday to Sunday, it's very similar. Apart from church on Sundays or church on Wednesday, it's very similar. Everything they desire and do, and their choices and their priorities are similar. So if we have such similar diaries, how can we expect to grow spiritually? Because that unbeliever's diary is helping them to grow in the worldly things. And that's of the devil. Do you agree? Because what you do every day will determine where you end up. So if your diary is not filling in the things of God, but it's just like somebody of the world, then you want to become like the world. God has to have mercy on us. There needs to be a change so we can grow. Because growth doesn't just happen like that. You are just there. You are in church. There's a part for us to play. You hear the word, hear the word. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, change me, change me. Then you open your mouth, you put the word, open your head. In fact, even the word. If you don't study it, it will not just happen. You will sleep one day and then the angel will come. I wish the angel will come and take the Bible and let me eat it like John. You eat it and afterwards I know Genesis to Revelation. I can preach to you without reading the word. Everything will come like that. Many of us are like that. We just spiritual babies. We are not really thinking like spiritually grown up people. You know, you have to spend time with the word and read the word. And after you read, you need to do it. You know, children, some children are very lazy in eating. I don't know whether your parents and you've experienced that. Some children don't like eating at all. Even they're chewing, they don't want to chew. So you have to mash the food. And sometimes when we come from, they open the baby's eye and pour the thing in. <laughs> because they won't. They're too lazy. Sometimes as Christians, when we find ourselves lazy like that, oh, let the pastor just change me. Oh, pastor, would you just do something to me so that I can come to church even when I don't feel like it? Pastor, just do something to me that I'll just give even I don't want to. Pastor, I can't do anything to you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. You have to do something. The Holy Ghost is there to help us. Oh, God has to help us, so we need to grow. Huh? The pastor has been preaching, 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 come to church, witness, evangelize. Oh, I just wish that pastor will push some power in me that I can talk to people. That pastor will push my The Holy Ghost is in you. Talk to that person. Amen. God, you are helping us. Many times, that's my prayer. Father, please just help us because we need to grow. What number are we on? Five. Six. Okay. The Holy Ghost will make us more like Jesus. So bring to remembrance. Let me emphasize on that because it's so important. Okay. John 14 and John 16, when you have time, read it. The whole of it because it talks about the work of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost, how he will help us to grow. You have to make a decision and a choice to tell a lie or not to tell a lie. How will the Holy Ghost help you to grow? In being a person of integrity and an honest person. How do you think practically? This is how. He will bring the word of God. That Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. That Jesus hates lying. Jesus calls Satan the father of lies. At that point, he is influencing you to exercise your sense to tell the truth. So that you will grow in the truth. This is how he helps us. Every area of our life. You name it. Your relationships, when it gets to your finance, doing business, the Holy Ghost will bring to your remembrance what the word says. 
And at that point, you and I need to decide to follow the Holy Ghost. Because if you don't follow the Holy Ghost, what would happen? You will follow the world or the devil, and you rather grow in that area. Is somebody with me? So when we talk about the Holy Ghost helping us, praying for the Holy Ghost, the influence of the Holy Ghost, He will bring the Word of God to us. Every time. There's some things that we think that the Holy Ghost does not really bother. But that is a lie. He's concerned about everything. Even the hair on our head. He's concerned. The clothes that we wear, the shoes that we wear, everything he's concerned. If we dare to ask him, he will bring the mind of God to us. Because he wants every aspect of our life to grow, to be like Jesus. Is someone with me? Okay, what number is are we on? Number six. Will make us more like Jesus by increasing the fruits of the Spirit in us. Again, as I said, I think um, two Sundays ago, five years ago, you are somebody that was lazy spiritually. You won't read your word. You only came to church on Sundays. You won't come into corporate prayer. You know, everything about you is how can I make more money, greed and lust and all sorts of things. And then you come down the line five years time. You are still having the same cravings, the same lust, the same desires, the same struggle and challenges. Child of God. That means that you are still a spiritual babe. Some of us may not think like that, but this is the word of God. Because what the Holy Ghost does is that every time you do the word, he has changed that old nature of lies. You told so many lies. Let's say in a whole year, five years ago, you would tell lies for eight months. <laughs> Four months, you won't tell lies. Four years ago, that will reduce to six months lies and then six months true. Three years time. It's supposed to get even less. Is somebody with me? But sometimes because we are exercising the other senses to the devil and the world, it, it is the proportion is the other way around. But the Holy Ghost is there to help us do less and less and less of the things of the world and the things of the flesh and more and more and more grow in the things of the spirit. But it's all up to us. It's about choices and our decision. Amen. If baby Dan decides, I keep using Dan to preach because he's the one I can see there in his chair. If he decides that he doesn't want that loving home, he wants to be adopted, it's up to him. He will go to a second best and he may not fulfill his potential. Agree? Yes. So we are at the best place. Let the Lord bring us up well. We need to walk in the spirit. Okay. Holy Spirit creates a holy environment. He will create a holy environment. He will create. Growth doesn't just happen. You push somebody to grow. You stretch them. You do this. No, 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 no. He will create that holy environment. Then you and I must make the effort to be in that holy environment. Separate yourself. It takes your effort, my effort, to separate myself, to come to church, to be in that prayer meeting, to be in that Bible study. That is the holy environment, and that is where the presence of the Holy Ghost can work on my mind, my emotions, and my physical body, every aspect of my life, and make me grow. Is somebody in church? I hope I haven't lost you. So let us look for the holy environment that the Holy Spirit creates for us, because it is in that environment that spiritual growth happens. We can appreciate it in a natural environment. There are certain fruits that you can grow in this part of the world that when you go to a tropical country, it will not grow, and vice versa. So there are certain things that will grow in you and I when we stay away from fellowship and the presence of God. That is the works of the flesh, the works of the devil, and the things of the world. How many hours do you spend with the things of the world? And yet still you have a craving and a desire to become more spiritual and to fulfill your spiritual destiny. Child of God, you can be 120 years and still desiring that same thing and there will be no spiritual growth. But when you make an effort to be in that environment of the Holy Ghost, then you are guaranteed to grow. Is someone with me? Okay, glory to Jesus. That's presence, the presence of the Holy Ghost. Right, the Holy Ghost 
will help us to control ourselves. Self-control, self-control. Self-control and discipline. That's one of the areas that the Holy Ghost helps. A child cannot discipline themselves. Discipline? What is discipline? No. When it gets to spiritual things, that spiritually immature baby in the spirit cannot pray for longer than 10 minutes or 30 minutes. Cannot sit in church longer than one hour. They are itchy already. They want to go home. That child, you see that child at one place, by the time you realize they've moved to another place because they are still immature, they are young. But when they grow up, we tell them, sit here. Even if it's three hours, they will sit there. We need to examine ourselves to see whether we are still spiritual babies. Our capacity to contain spiritual things is very, very low. You take an adult, an adult can contain a lot in the spirit. Spiritually mature person. They can be in the presence of God 24 hours and not become irritable and restless. But you take a spiritually baby, you put them in the presence of God and they are ready to pick up that mobile phone to talk to someone. Is somebody with me in church? We need to assess ourselves and control ourselves as the Holy Spirit helps us. The Holy Ghost will increase our faith and our trust in God. Faith and trust in God. Faith and trust in God is very key to our spiritual growth. Because without trusting and believing and leaning on the promises and the word of God, which is our spiritual food, our spiritual drink, our spiritual vitamins, our spiritual everything, there cannot be growth. We need to trust. Trust in it. Sometimes when people are doing research in the medical field, they will take, let's say, 100 patients with pain in their back. And they will take a syringe with water and inject 50 of the patients. And then the other 50, they'll give them paracetamol. And they'll follow them up and see the outcome. And they'll ask each one of them the same questions. The 50 ones who had injection of water will say, yeah, I feel well. They didn't know that they were injected with water, by the way. That's part of the research and the test. And the 50 that had paracetamol will also say that I am well. Because of their faith, when they saw that needle coming, they saw that water, they believed that it's soluble paracetamol. Are you with me? So without faith and trust that that word can change your life, that presence of God can change that situation, it can bring you a miracle, then nothing will happen. Because some of us, we come to church like, oh yeah, it's another son, if I don't come, my wife will be on my case, my husband will be, let me just come. There is no faith, there's no trust. So that's why you're not growing. You're not experiencing the breakthroughs of God. Your desire is still the same. I just want to go and sit and just watch a bit of soap opera. That is the desire because you've been exercising that desire all week. Even when you are in church, you are still sitting behind the TV because spiritual things are very different. The physical body is here, but the spirit is at home. Watching Manchester United versus Chelsea. Amen, somebody. Are you with me? <laughs> God is helping us. I call forth your spirit to come here now in Jesus' name. By force, by fire. What number are we on? Huh? Okay. I'll just finish. Okay, because this message goes on and on. Right. Okay, the Holy Spirit will help us to plan. Many believers don't plan to fail, but they fail to plan. It's almost as if the Holy Ghost. I always remember scriptures in Acts 12. The day the Lord opened my eyes and said, Look and see. Angels went to the prison where Peter was bound. But they didn't push Peter's head out of that prison. They broke the chains off. They gave him the word from the living God. It was up to Peter to get up and get out of that prison. Hallelujah. Amen. Because we came, we are there. Oh, I feel, I feel depressed. I feel, oh, I can't do it. You have got the word of God. Get up and do something with that word. Amen. Because the Holy Ghost, you are praying for the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, every time you ask him to come, he's there. Every time you ask for a refill, he comes to refill you. Because the Bible says, this is the confidence that we have in God. That when we ask anything. 
anything according to his will, he will give it to us. He will hear us. And when he hears us, it means that we are guaranteed answered prayer. So if he says that, even heavenly fathers, wicked people, when you ask them and you continue to ask for bread, they will not give you a stone. How much more our heavenly father, when we ask for the Holy Ghost, you ask, Holy Ghost, I'm a bit dry. Come, come, come. Just grace my life. Motivate me. He's coming. And you open up, you receive him. Now the rest is up to you. Get up and do something with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Oh, sit down. Do something. You have the food in your mouth. Oh, I'm hungry, mommy. Mommy, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. The food is in your mouth. Chew it and swallow it. And you will get strength. The food is there. You read it. Oh, it's nice. Isn't that beautiful way? Oh, powerful way. Do it and you will receive energy. You will receive miracle. You will receive breakthrough. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Amen. The Lord will help us. He's the only one who can help us to grow. The Holy Ghost will help us to overcome hesitation and procrastination. Every time tomorrow. And tomorrow will never come. Every time. Tomorrow, I say, oh, when I was single, oh, if only I have a husband, I will serve the Lord. The husband has come. If only I had a child, I will do this. Now the child has come. If only I didn't have the child, I will do this. Before you had a child, you were wishing you had the child. Now the child has come. You are wishing you didn't have. What should God do? Mercy, Lord. Say mercy. Excuses excuses, procrastination, you realize that tomorrow or next year or next month, that child who is now a baby has grown to a teenager coming with more challenges and the thing that you had to do for the Lord to grow, you haven't done it because you are waiting for tomorrow and your tomorrow has never come in your world. Grow somebody. We need to grow. Whatever the Lord is telling you and I today, we must rise and do it. Child of God, we are not guaranteed tomorrow. We are not guaranteed forever. Many of us are playing with our lives. Many of us think we have forever. Oh, next year is coming. Who told you next year is coming? Except God has said to us next year is coming. If we don't fulfill the purpose for which God has planted us on earth, he's long suffering. He'll give us a long opportunity. But after a while, he said, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, darling. Because you are useless on earth. Yes, you are a worshiper. I can see you worship me in your room. I can see you love me so much. But as on earth, planet earth, something called planet earth. Darling, you are useless, God will say to me. Because I don't win any soul. I don't disciple any soul. Everything is me, 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 me. From the day I was born. yourself that you can live my son's life for him because you've been crucified with him when you receive my son no longer do you live for you and me and me and me and me from now you live for me jesus everything i said to you have to do child of god there must be a watershed moment in our life my prayer this week when we're praying for the i said father holy ghost let there be understanding because until we understand these spiritual things it will almost be like, you know, nice story, nice message. She shouted, she did this, nice, no, 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 no. But when you understand, you really appreciate that the life that you and I have is to live for Jesus. And Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. No wonder God spoke to our pastor that it is all about witnessing, winning souls, evangelizing. Child of God, our life is useless otherwise. Many people have died early. He said, oh, but they were beautiful, nice Christians. Yes, they were nice. You are nice Christians. If you don't come to church, it doesn't mean that you're a bad Christian. But after a while, God will call you home. Because if he doesn't call you home, by the time you realize, you've entered into sin. And he may lose you in heaven. Let's rise to our feet. I'll end here. 
it is time to change. It is time to allow ourselves to be used by the Holy Ghost, who is Jesus, who is God, to do what pleases Him, so we will grow. He decides what we need for us to grow, not we ourselves. Pray for yourself. Pray. You have received the word. God has spoken to all of us. Most of us are still babies in the spirit. Thinking about ourselves, our own needs. And if we have to think about somebody else, it's just our family, that's all. Our immediate family, our extended family. But God has many millions of children outside. And many times you think, oh, this is for daddy, this is for Sir Patrick, that's it. Who told you? God also said there's a group of people just for you. The day you open up and hear his voice, he will tell you, what are you doing about it? Father, have mercy upon us. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy, for we desire to grow. It is only in the constant, consistent growth of the believer that pleases God. Nothing else pleases God. That walk of faith that is growing every day, you are becoming more and more like Jesus Christ. God is only pleased by himself, I've always said. When he sees us, he doesn't see darling, he sees the Holy Ghost. And the more the Holy Ghost, the more Jesus he sees, the more he's pleased. But when he sees more of Daddy, he sees more of Christ, he's very displeased because he wants to see his son. Father, have mercy. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. In the areas where we played hide and seek, lied, we lied, we lied, we lied to man. We lied, not knowing that it is God that we are lying to. And we are reaping painful results because we are staying as spiritual babies, not bringing forth fruits in any area of our life. Father, have mercy. Have mercy. We'll be rebellious and disobedient. Not knowing that the seed of rebellion, the seed of disobedience is causing us to be stagnant in our spiritual growth. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Please repent. Because that's what I see. A lot of us, we are so rebellious. We are so rebellious. We think we know more than God. We think we know more than our pastor. Our pastor is telling us, oh, come. Come to this meeting. Come. We think, oh, by the time we are here, we have another plan. <laughs> Father, have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy on us. Cleanse our minds from these filthy thoughts. Free us in our mind. By the help of your Holy Ghost, give us a revelation, knowledge of you, of your word, of your spirit. Holy Ghost, help us. You are our helper. You are a helper. Think upon the word. You are busy. You are anxious. You are worried. You will cry when the natural things are not happening for you. When you are not making progress, in the physical, you are crying. You are so depressed and discouraged. But how about your spiritual growth? It doesn't bother you. It must be the other way around, child of God. Lord, change our desires. Lift up your voice and pray. Five years ago, four years ago, Three years ago, two years ago, one year ago, spiritually you were on the same level. Does that not bother you more than the physical realm and the natural realm? It's time to rise. It's time to allow the Holy Ghost to do His work. Every root of rebellion, every spirit of lies, every spirit of lust, I bind you and I command you to leave by your roots. I overthrow you out of the church, out of our lives in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, reveal the truth. Bring to remembrance the word of God. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Just come with me finally before. Thank you, viewer, for watching this broadcast, this episode of The Glory. I trust that you have been blessed. 
And as you have carefully listened to the word of God, go and put it into practice. And the glory of God, which is the knowledge of God, would change your life and would give you an inheritance in your life and the life after. I want you to repeat this prayer after me. If you have not confessed Jesus as your Lord and Savior, close your eyes with me and pray. Father God, I thank you for today. I acknowledge my sinful nature. I acknowledge that you gave Jesus to die for me. And on the third day, Jesus rose from the grave. Today, I confess Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Father, for forgiving me of all of my sins and accepting me as your child. In Jesus' name, amen.